Good afternoon, ladies and DGENs. Check out crowtokens.com if you're interested in the crow tokens. They've been booming, uh, having a lot of fun with these. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about MasterCard trademark pending. What are MasterCard's plans for crypto? Well, the reality is nobody really has a clue because it's just a trademark, which doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. I'm more interested in patents personally because that's where the big bucks are made, but they're probably uh getting some of those together too oh. Oh. man i'm back to yawning again folks i don't know what it is today maybe i'll wait and do some of these later in the evening i'm just much more awake at night than i am during the day i struggle through the day and then at a certain point when the, when the sun is gone uh I, I maybe i'm part vampire i don't know i thought i was just part ogre but i don't know so anyway mastercard files a trademark application for crypto and blockchain tools the move indicates mastercard's increasing interest in the digital space well of course because blackrock's getting into it now and everybody's going to really be trying to jump in if mastercard simplifies blockchain payments it could onboard millions to crypto let me just put this out there for you guys that don't get it. I know that right now we're in a sea of FUD. We're in a sea of a bear market. We're seeing things like Gary Gensler and the SEC cracking down, doing all kinds of stuff to basically, you know, push everybody into a state of panic about what's going to happen with the cryptocurrency market, all while groups like BlackRock are filing uh, to have the first official Bitcoin spot ETF passed uh, of which they would control. And, and you know, a, a group with, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars and assets under management that's a pretty big deal especially with fidelity now coming up close on their heels and i'm sure many others once one of these gets approved and people are able to use that as a framework uh that they know will be more likely to get approved in the future you know but blackrock wants to be first to market with this vehicle and they probably will and it's going to change a lot about cryptocurrency and this is all happening pre having Everything that's happening right now is laying down the fabric, the foundation from which we will all grow in likely exponential ways between, uh, you know, before this halving cycle and the peak of the next market, likely sometime in 2025. So while everybody is all up in arms and everybody is, you know, I mean, there's stuff going on. There's stuff going on with Gary Gensler. I mean, Gary, let's put it this way. Former SEC advisor Gensler's crackdown on crypto could be stopped by legal doctrine. There's a lot of stuff popping off about Gary Gensler and the way he's been um, iron fisted, just slamming his fist down on the cryptocurrency space, uh, along with, you know, like Senator Warren, who, we, you know, BitBoy's done some amazing stuff about her uh, recently. I mean, it's all smoke and mirrors to me. It's like they're pushing everything down. They're trying to make everybody scared. They're trying to create all of this panic in a market so that groups like, you know, go figure, BlackRock can come into the space and clean up shop, right? And be the saviors of crypto, the savior, you know, and it's like, okay, cool. You know, they're, they're obviously... Um, <laughs> uh, applicable is, isn't quite the word uh, but the crypto industry crackdown spearheaded by the u.s securities and exchange commission could be put to rest by a decades old legal doctrine according to one of the regulators previous advisors oh man uh <laughs> I do this on purpose to give you guys a reading break. Historically, the Chevron doctrine has granted regulatory agencies broad discretion in how they oversee certain industries based on broad mandates from Congress with vague specifics. However, the major questions doctrine, which is viewed as a competing doctrine, states that an agency must receive explicit approval from, from Congress before trying to regulate a matter of national, economic, or political importance which it's obvious the SEC is not doing. Uh, and, and they don't like it. Congress doesn't like it. Um, Gensler has received backlash from crypto supportive members of Congress, including House Majority Whip Tom Emmer, who authored a bill this month to both restructure the SEC and fire Gensler. 
Securities regulation is not meant to be precise, but is instead intentionally drafted to be broad and all-encompassing, he explained. Clarity is not just uncommon, it is deliberately avoided. This was by former SEC official John Reed Stark debating uh, billionaire investor Mark Cuban on his subject last week with the former arguing that crypto has all of the regulatory clarity it needs. That is not true. Crypto, crypto does not have the regulatory clarity it needs because it is not... It's not the same as what um, assets were back in the 30s. You know, the, the, all of these legal doctrine, all of this stuff was written ultimately to, to like support corn crops, for God's sakes. Basically, people investing in the potential profitability of corn back in the 30s. And we're trying to compare this these legal doctrine against the activities going on today in centralized and decentralized blockchain, uh, you know, blockchains and crypto ledgers and and all of the associated technologies, layer one, layer twos, you name it. OK, it is not the same. These are complete. If anything, I believe that. I do believe that you know the the, the cryptocurrency space um, does have a foot in both fields. Okay, let's be fair about it. But the way that they can change uh, over time, the way a, one project can start here and end up here, and the, you know, um, there's just so much to it, and it's so much more involved. And I know, I know from a policing perspective, it's easier to just cash, cast cast uh, a broad net, and whatever you catch, you catch, and you sort through it later, right? Um, maybe you're catching some crab, some some uh, you know bass, some shark, uh, whatever, and you, you know you carve it up and put it to market and deal with it any way you want when you get it um but you'd rather have that bro big broad net to at least catch something than to have a very small net and only catch very very specific things and i and i understand that that helps them um but it's not helping the industry okay this lack of clarity this lack of of desire to work with any cryptocurrency companies you know this come in and register business that is not even a possible thing it doesn't even it's not even a thing uh you know it's it's all the smoke and mirrors around the destruction of the cryptocurrency space that's what's got everybody up in arms everybody is there and, and you know what's funny too is like it 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 blows me away when I see like people on the right supporting crypto while people on the left are against it. And it's like, if you, if you were to break down every method by which an individual can be free, the left is not feeling it. They're like, they don't like it. And, and it's, it blows my mind because back in the day, that's what they were all about. Now it's the polar opposite. And um, it, it's just the way people are sold different things, the way uh, propaganda works today. You know, I mean, the grand narrative is you should let us control everything you do because we know better than you do. And if you want to be, uh, if you want to have this right or that right, and you want to be able to walk down the street unmolested by anybody, you've got to do the X, Y, and Z. Um, and it's just, it's mind blowing to me the way society has been changing of late. And I really do wish that there was a day when so much of this stuff politically and otherwise could just sort itself out and we can just start moving on. All many of us wanna do is just live. We just wanna live, we just wanna be left alone. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to a brighter, brighter day across all fronts. But until then, uh, I guess we just have to, you know, read it and deal with it as best we can. But, uh, you know, there's there could be some good things. I don't know. You know, can, can Gensler change his ways? Maybe um, actually get down to brass tacks and start really sorting through things and making things more positive in the cryptocurrency space while still being able to regulate effectively. Maybe they work with the CFTC the way they probably should. And, you know, just kind of like you have right versus left, maybe this is one of those situations where you've got Gensler on the left, you got the CFTC on the right, and, you know, the truth is always somewhere in the middle, generally, right? So maybe why can't they just work together on creating a, a legitimate framework? Obviously, the majority whip uh, or whatever, I, I didn't even know the whip was a thing until watching House of Cards. So I find it interesting that now I'm seeing it. House majority whip, Tom Emmer. I mean, they put out this bill uh, that, you know, could very well help change the way cryptocurrency is regulated with a lot of clarity that's going to benefit the space overall and i i look forward to this taking shape but i i don't see biden signing off on this that's the problem you know i, I the, the way our 
the way our democracy works right now, uh, it's it's definitely, you know, uh, it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Hopefully, some of this stuff happens sooner than later. I believe that we're going to see some of this reform and some of these things take shape, um, at least laying out the framework. And I, I would not be surprised to see some of this stuff popping off and actually going into effect in early 2025. And I think it'll be perfect timing. Uh, but at the same time, the flip side to this is we don't see any of this. And all they do is just push Bitcoin for BlackRock to launch this ETF and you know basically open the floodgates for all of the other major institutions that want to jump into the bitcoin space uh you know and yeah so we'll have to see listen as i've always said bitcoin is king but altcoins are key and altcoins are what ultimately drives the interest and the value in bitcoin overall so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out until next time guys crow your coins and i'll see you soon